This is an example about Mandel Fleming model, negative shock in the goods market. The question is, consider an economy with a fixed exchange rate. Suppose the economy is hit by a negative goods market demand shock, say a decrease in consumer confidence. Work through the impact of this in the absence of any government intervention. The analysis can be conducted entirely in the ISLM balance of payment framework, but you are welcome to use any supporting graphs, including the goods market and money market. So we'll start with our Y axis, which is the real interest rate our x-axis, which is the real output. We have our downward IS curve, and we have our upward LM curve, and then we have our horizontal balance of payment curve. We see that all the three curves intersect at the same point, which means that we are at equilibrium, which will give us R1, which we can call it RF, as what was mentioned in the question. And we have here our Y1. Then, in the question, they said that we have a lower consumer confidence which would result in higher consumption. If consumption decreases, it would result in lower aggregate demand. Lower aggregate demand will affect IS curve, therefore IS will be lower, which means it will shift to the left. Therefore, we're going to shift IS curve here to the left. We will get a new point of intersection between IS2 and the original LM curve. This will give us Y2, which is lower than Y1, and R2, which is lower than R1. So, because we have a lower interest, this means that we will have a lower cash flow, which means investors would prefer to take their fund away from Australia and put it abroad in order to get a higher interest. Therefore, cash outflow will be higher. We said in the question that we have a fixed exchange rate. Therefore, in order to maintain the nominal exchange rate, the central bank, RBA, they need to go into open market sale of foreign currency. So when they sell the foreign currency, they will buy the domestic currency. Consequently, the money supply will decrease, which would result in a higher interest rate. This higher interest rate will affect the LM curve. Therefore, LM curve will be lower, which means shift to the left. Therefore, LM curve will shift to the left in order to intersect with the point of intersection between IS2 and balance of payment, this point. Therefore, I will shift LM curve to the left. So now the market reach equilibrium because the three curves intersect at the same point. So now we will have R1, which is our original interest rate, but our output will be Y3, which is lower than Y2, which is lower than Y1. The second part of the question. What is the impact on interest rate and output? This was the last point we mentioned. We said that interest here will be the same, which means R1 is equal to RF. It's the same, but output became lower than Y2, lower than Y1. The third part of the question. Provide a narrative of the economic events experienced in its transition from the starting point before the shock to the final equilibrium after the shock. Make sure the narrative is consistent with the graph. Be sure to describe economic events, not a description of your graph. We have a negative shock in the goods market, which is lower consumer confidence. This would result in lower consumption, which would lead to lower output. Consequently, demand for money will fall due to the transaction motive since income level drops. Therefore, interest rate will decrease. This would result in a capital flight from the domestic economy seeking the higher interest rate available abroad, which would result in a higher cash outflow. The oversupply of domestic currency in the forex market as investors seek to exchange it in order to buy foreign bonds, this would lead to a depreciation of the currency. Since we have a fixed exchange rate, the central bank will buy up the excess supply of currency in order to maintain the nominal exchange rate because, as we mentioned, we have a fixed exchange rate. The reduction in money supply would cause higher interest rate, this would lead to lower investment and lower output even more. We see that the interest rate is pushed up back so that there is no investment increase to make up for the consumption decrease. We said here, we have here a lower consumption, then interest rate decreased, this could result in higher investment, but at the same time, we increase interest rate so it would result in lower investment. So this one will offset this one because interest rate will return back to its original level. Therefore, we'll end up with a lower consumption. Therefore, we will end up with the same interest rate, but output 
dropped. The next part of the question. What would be an appropriate fiscal policy response in order to keep the economy at Y1? Is a fiscal policy response feasible? We said our original shock was shifting IS curve to the left. Fiscal policy will affect IS curve. Therefore, if we could return IS curve back to its original level, this means that we we'll return back to our original equilibrium. Therefore, we can use our fiscal policy in terms of higher government spending or lower taxes. Therefore, IS curve will shift to the right to its original level. Therefore, we return back to our original interest, which is R1 equal to RF, and our output will be equal to Y1. The last point of the question. What would be an appropriate monetary policy response in order to keep the economy at Y1? Is a monetary policy response feasible? So when we talk about monetary policy, we talk about money supply. We talk about interest rate, which will affect LM. But remember, in the question, we said we have fixed exchange rate, which means any time we change money supply and we change interest rate, this will affect exchange rate. Therefore, in order to maintain a fixed exchange rate, we cannot use monetary policy. Therefore, our monetary policy is not independent, which we call it non-discretionary monetary policy.